And welcome to another Project Warhammer as I move back into the Age of Sigma after having played Warhammer ooh, over 10 years ago when it was Warhammer Fantasy Battle. Uh, behind me is my now burgeoning Night Haunt army, which I switched to from the Skaven because these are a hell of a lot easier to paint. And also because I was super annoyed that, quite frankly, until there's a proper Battle Tome Skaven, I'm going to leave those alone for a while. So what I was thinking in terms of is, okay, looking towards the 2000 point army now, I've, I want to obviously try out a number of things um, with a view to going to a tournament. So basically crafting an army that's not to be used against a specific type of opponent, that's not to be used for narrative play, just, but for matched play against all comers and against the various different battle plans. We go to a tournament, of course, there are six battle plans in the core rules. There are many more elsewhere. The six in the core rules, of which is five that you would do, and you wouldn't know in advance which five it's going to be. Now, Night Haunt, one big strength is movement. Uh, not just because they're all super fast, they have some fairly fast units, but the fact that they can all fly uh, is a big boon. So it doesn't really matter whether there's lots of terrain or not so much terrain. They can just go right over it. They can go right over each other, in fact. Uh, so it's absolutely brilliant from that. So what I was looking at originally, I think I may have discussed this or may not, was a 2,000-point army of, of this sort. There's an awful lot of duplicates. There were two units of Reapers, two units of Stalkers, two units of Chain Rasp Horde. Uh, in terms of characters, this was going to include a Knight of Shrouds on Ethereal Steed, as the general, which is still the plan. A Guardian of Souls, because, of course, I can't actually imagine anyone taking a Nighthorn army that wouldn't include a Guardian of Souls. A Cairn Wraith, for reasons I'll come to in a moment, as well as an allied Vampire Lord. Uh, the Vampire Lord, even though it's an ally and you wouldn't get, you know, you wouldn't be able to choose an extra spell for it, it would only have Arcane Bolt and Mystic Shield. And it wouldn't have the Night Haunt ability where, although it's got a 4 plus save, that 4 plus save is modifiable. There's an awful lot of downsides to it. But the fact that it can, you know, regenerate D3 wounds on up to three summonable units around it. And in this particular army, there's lots of summonable units. I thought, you know what, it's a bargain. Bargain for 140 points. Definitely get. And um, included in this, the reason why there are so many duplicates of these units were a couple of battalions and that allowed me to not only have a couple of extra command points but also a couple of extra artifacts of power so there were going to be multiple artifacts of power here um i was basically going to have um the cairn wraith with the, an artifact that allowed it to become a wizard so there'd be cairn wraith as a wizard the vampire as a wizard and uh, the guardian of souls so that'd be like three wizards that pretty decent i thought especially if they can get some um if they can get all of them use spells in a situation where my opponent wouldn't want any of them really to go through because it gives me a chance of getting something off in each turn as well as of course being able to attempt to unbind up to three spells obviously depending on range however as i started to look at it i thought to myself it's still got you know quite a few models a lot of night when i really look and i started to watch an awful lot of battle reports lots of night haunts they don't really strike me as being great at close combat close combat is of course the meat of it you need to come up with an army that can deal damage in close combat it's certainly not a stand back and shoot army but it doesn't occur to me as being a great strength so i went back to the drawing board with this and i eventually came up with okay let's really start to go a bit more magic heavy here and so I elected for Lady Alinda, who's one of the special, unique characters. Now, in Fantasy Battle, I always had a bit of an issue with these. In fact, you know, there was a time where, to use special characters, as they were called at the time, you needed permission of your opponent, and, and they weren't used in tournaments. And, and people would argue things like, yeah, but they cost a lot of points. You're certainly paying the points for them. Well, this is true, but that's not what the issue was. The issue was always for me that they have abilities and items that are above what you could normally take because, you know, in 6th edition particularly, which is the edition where I actually played seriously in tournaments. I played editions before it, but this was the one where I sort of played in tournaments. 
you were limited in how much how many points you could spend on magic items. So you were effectively raising the limit by taking special characters. That was my main issue with it. But coming into Age of Sigma, and, and although I still can't help but see it in terms of another version of Fantasy Battle, as I watch more battle reports and read more about it and really start to get it in my head and really start to visualise, you know, playing it, I just think to myself, well, it's one of these things where they're just used. There is no... There doesn't seem to me to be an issue of it. Now, I don't know in terms of the culture of it, if there's any unwritten rules about it. But I certainly haven't seen any evidence of it. In fact, an awful lot of battle reports I've seen, people just take them. It's like, oh, I'm bringing this thing. It's not a big thing made of it. So I thought Lady Linda, because she's effectively like two wizards, she can cast two spells. Um, she has an, a special one of her own, so she can have a choice of four spells, the two cool ones, her own one, and choose one from the Nighthaunt lore. Um, as well as being fairly beef. I mean, she's only got seven wounds, so I don't want to put her right in the line of fire. But at the same time, she's she can do a fair amount of damage beyond just her spell casting as well. Um, as well as, I was thinking, a, a Spirit Torment and Chain Gas. Chain Gas to me, because I was really trying to put something in with some bite into the combat phase. Now, the Black Coach can be a fairly terrifying thing. Now, got the model... So I will be assembling and painting that. And that will be a bit of a task, I imagine. But that's that's on the list. As well as a load of other things. I've been buying loads of models. Most of which will never make it in there. But I want to try different ones out. So the chain gas, I don't think are awesome. When you're sort of working out how many wounds you like to get and things like that. They're not brilliant. But they look like they could be. They might have a bit of a fear factor. And that's what I want as well. I want a bit of a fear factor. So that not only can I do lots of wounds and get into combats, but also I can, if I can make my opponent afraid of certain units, I have some control over how they'll spread out over the battlefield. And then the Banshees I went for as well, because and, and these are now pretty solid in my plans. I'm not really seriously thinking about dropping these. Because they only have one attack, but... It's minus two rend. So if they get a hit and a wound, it's minus two rend and D3 damage. But they also have another useful little ability. As a unit, they can attempt to unbind a spell. If they successfully unbind a spell, they get an extra attack. So they could have, they could basically double their attacks. Now, with minus two rend and D3 wounds, that could be fairly scary in itself. So you can bet your ass if ever an opponent tries to cast a spell and these guys are in range of it. I am going to try and use these to unbind it first and foremost. So this was an, an, an endless spell there. The, the um, oh, Shyish Reaper, that's it. Um, which is a bit of a weird one. The Shyish Reaper, it, it's one of those... You know, there's another one, a boundless, uh, endless spell that's similar in some ways. And that it moves through and does... And you roll to see if it does damage to the models it moves over. Only in this particular case, first of all, you can control direction. You can pivot it for free without using the pending movement. And move it where you like. But it works best against things with a good save. Because the way you do, you deal the damage, it deals mortal wounds. For each model it goes over, you have to roll greater than their save roll. So, if something doesn't have a save roll, I suppose that means they're immune to it. If something has a roll of uh, a save of six, I think that means they're immune to it because they've got to roll over it. So, it needs to have a save of at least five plus. Ironically, this thing is better against Nighthaunt armies, where almost everything has a four plus save. Chain Rasp Horde, five plus save. Um... So, yeah, you want to use this against, I suppose, things like elite units. But against elite units, I mean, they tend to be multi-wound. It's not like you're going to kill scores of them. But you could do a reasonable amount of damage to them. So I thought it's one of those things, again, a little bit scary for some things, but it won't do any damage at all to some. Uh, so it started to evolve a little bit like that. Then I decided to really go for it. And I thought, no, we're going for it here with the magic want to blast the shit or a combination of because the characters what i started to realize was these special characters even like the wizardy ones although they don't shape up against some of the really big char special characters of, of some other armies 
they can do as much damage as an entire unit of, of my bog standard troops, because my bog standard, or even decent troops, are not awesome. Like even the hex race there, um, they might add a little bit of fear factor, but it's totally groundless. They don't have much to fear. The reason I'm taking them is because they're fast. And, uh, you know, for in terms of keeping your eye on the prize, and the prize is capturing objectives. Yes, you want to try and, you know, kill off as much of your enemy as possible because that will help you capture the objectives. But ultimately, the aim of the game is capturing objectives. It's, it's strategic control of the battlefield. So I thought, right, we'll take Lady Alinda, like two wizards. We'll take Raikonor, who's like, oh, Raikonor, I suppose it would be pronounced. I don't know. It's really funny because technically EI should be Raikonor, shouldn't it? But you also think R-E-I-K, Reich, Reichsguard. So I don't know. I keep saying Raikonor. Anyway, he's a wizard. And also fairly handy in combat as well. Um, both of those characters can also just randomly throw out the odd mortal wound. Uh, the, you know, it's just, you don't have to roll for it. It's just going to do it. And uh, that's all there is to it. Um, so I thought, yeah, let's take these. Obviously, this is now starting to add up in terms of character points because I've now got full six characters. Uh, you know, the, the old Spirit Torment, Vampire Lord still at this point, Guardian of Souls, Knight of Shrouds, but plus the two special characters as well. So fewer um, units, which necessitated the Spirit Host. Now, the Spirit Host looked fairly decent in terms of a blocking thing because what I'd start to think in terms of the army is, right, Think of the army in three blocks. The center, which I just want to use to capture an objective and be able to hold it long enough for reinforcements to arrive if a significant portion of the enemy army came to bear on it. And Spirit Hounds would be okay for that because, you know, it, you, for 120 points you get three bases. Each one's got three wounds. They've got a right load of attacks. Um, they're not brilliant attacks, but a right load of them. Um, but the downside is all my sort of attempts to strengthen these units are based on abilities, such as the Vampire Lord's ability, but there are others as well, of being able to replenish D3 wounds. Now, against a multi-wound unit, that's not great. So against the Chain Rasp, easy. Okay, it'll roll it if you know, result of a 1, 2, or a 3. You just raise that many up because it's one wound models. Spirit House, bit of a problem. If you've got a base that's lost a wound, all right, you, you're going to get that back. Great. If it's lost two wounds and you roll a two or a three, you'll get both of them back. Great. But let's say you've got, you've just lost one whole spirit host base. So you've got two left, two models left, but they haven't lost any wounds. You roll your D3 to see how many wounds you can get back. Unless you roll a three, which is a five or a six on a D6, you get nothing. You get nothing at all. Um... So tricky from that point of view. Uh, those sort of spells that raise those are much better on single wound units or single wound model units. But the Knight of Shrouds, I'm taking a battle trait that allows him to just raise up D3 models from a unit. That would be ideal, but he's very mobile. I don't want him hanging about with a unit that is effectively only there to hold territory and just scare things off. And if it doesn't work, yes, okay, I'll come back. I suppose, you know, it might work. Um, the Black Coach can also, also has that ability, which is why it's with the Hex Race, because that's another multi-wound unit that I don't want to lose. And then, so that's the centre that just wants to get to a place and hold it. And then the two flat, I mean, it doesn't have to be set up like that. Even though I call it a centre, it wouldn't necessarily be deployed in the centre. It may de be deployed on the left corner or bottom left-ish, depending on where the objectives were. Um, but two other units, one of which is designed to be fast, that's what you can see on the right flank, one of which is designed to be placed in the underworlds at deployment and then appear in my movement phase wherever I like, as long as it's more than nine inches from enemy, to again create a bit of a fear factor for where I might plonk them. And, and that's very much the thinking, that is still the thinking. And I thought chain gas and banshees could provide that fear factor, and a black coach and a very very fast couple of characters and some hex race could definitely provide a fear factor elsewhere, causing my opponent potentially to try and strengthen areas against it, weaken in other areas. And because that unit on the right is fast enough, and the unit on the left can go where they like, that would allow them to switch to wherever is weakest. So that was the plan. 
Then I thought of just going for broke when it came to characters. I just thought, you know what? Let's go mad. Go mad. And I thought, well, the problem with the Vampire Lord is it's only really there for those D3 extra wounds. Um, and, and, and it can do it up to three summonable, friendly summonable units, but it's, I'm only expecting it to be near one of them. It could move over to be with the, you know, the, the Banshees and what was the Chain Gas at the time. It now says Hexrays. But I thought, well, what if I just took a Coven Throne? Because that is fairly fearsome in combat as well. Can do a lot of damage. You know, that can rove around. I could just leave the Chain Rasp Horde there and rove around with the Coven Throne. Um, and if necessary, fall back uh, if it looked a bit dodgy. You know, and, and this, I think, and this is really opening itself up now. Uh, and I was starting to think in terms of, I don't really need that many units. I'll let my characters do all the beating stuff up. And then when I started getting to think of it, because I'd been look, reading through the Nighthorn thing, you know, obviously at this point I've got Lady Alinda, who's one of the unique characters in the Nighthorn book. I've got Raikonor, who's another. There is a third, which I always forget his name, but it's the, it's the Craven King. It's actually quite weird as well, the way the rules are written, because I, I can certainly imagine myself getting accused of being a bit beardy here, because Lady Alinda, clearly in the law in the storyline, is the boss of all the Night's Haunts. That's what she's there for. But normally with these Mortarks, or these particularly powerful characters, it does sort of say, if you include this character in your army, they will be the general. But it doesn't say that for her. And I'm not particularly keen on making her the general, because... You know, first of all, the Knight of Shroud's command ability, I think, is better than hers. I think it's going to be in useful more often. And also, I'm not entirely sure on this. I do need to check this if I can. I think if you take... I don't know where I get this from, though, because I can't remember reading it now. I just seem to have got this impression, but I don't know where. That if you take a unique character, and, and they're your general, that you can't take an extra command trait... So I'd miss out on that important command trait. But whether or not that's true, the command trait I'm intending to take on my Knight of Shrouds works best on someone who's highly mobile. He is highly mobile. 12-inch movement. She's got a 6-inch movement. Not so mobile. And also, I don't want her wandering off on her own anyway. Um, so there was that reason as well. But then, interestingly, the Craven King... Again, in the background, it's quite clear. He, he can never lead. Doesn't matter how small or large or complex the army is that he is in, he can never lead. That's his curse. doesn't say that in the rules. You could make him your general. So but I can, so I can well imagine, let's say I did the worst of worst things and I turned up with an army with all three of us and I made, um, I made the Craven King my general. You can imagine people going, oh, that's a bit... Um, so I don't know. So I don't know how it would be taken... If I, I'm not intending to make him the general, by the way. I'm intending to make my Knight of Shrouds a general. But the other thing I was thinking is where that Coven Throne is, I could replace that with the Craven King because he is a complete beast in combat. In fact, if he is anywhere near that Guardian of Souls that would buff him, basically to give him plus one wound, he will be frightening. Frightening. And if he gets anywhere near an enemy... He's an enemy general killer. So if... Because I'm always thinking in terms of what strengths could an opposing army have and how do I deal with them. If one of the strengths of an opposing army is that they have got something that's a bit of a beast for their general. The best chance of taking it out is with this thing. Now it could get eaten but it could do some serious damage in the meantime. Um, so then obviously at this point I'm, well, that's going to rein in my magical power bit. But there's a couple of things about that. One. Lady Alinda is two wizards. Guardian of Souls is a wizard and Raikonaut is a wizard. So although that's three wizard characters, which already you could argue for 2,000 points army is still pretty decent for someone who wants to get magic out. But realistically, it's four because Lady Alinda can do two. Plus, I've got the Banshee's been able to unbind as well. So it's like four wizards in a way, but the ability to attempt to unbind five spells. Range dependent. Um... So I'd still be no slouch there. But then I have the option of still taking the artifact power 
uh, the artifact of power that allows allows another character to become a wizard for which i was thinking maybe i could take that and put that on my spirit torment and i'd still be back up to four wizard models but you know the equivalent of um five wizards because of counting linda as two so that's where i'm sort of thinking at the moment so realistically you know and i've gone through so many of these things i'm thinking i don't know which is best of course i don't know which is best not really tried them out so what i've ended up doing i'm still in the process of doing it is basically to order so many different night haunt units you know so many different ones in different combinations and just try different ones out i mean there's certain things in the army i want to keep i want to keep the block of 20 chain rasp horde the right hand flank there that's base i can't ever imagine changing that i want the ethereal uh, the knight of shrouds on ethereal steed i want Raikonor, the grim hailer i want them the black coach is all i really want the black coach i want the unit of hex race there so the right hand flank there which as i say isn't always going to be set up there it's just that's what i'm calling it in terms of thinking about my army shape that is pretty much set in stone. I'm I until I play enough games and decide that it's not working, I am in my own mind set on that. In terms of the centre, I am set on Chain Rasp Horde. In terms of other characters, I'm set on Lady Alinda and I'm set on the Guardian of Souls. I'm not completely set on the Spirit Torment. That could you know. Uh, but I'm at the moment thinking I'm definitely going to try it out. In terms of the other character, or if I even take another character, I'm not completely set at all. It could be a Coven Throne. It could just go back down to being a bog standard Vampire Lord. Um, it could be, as I say, at the moment I'm thinking in terms of the Craven King. In terms of the units that on the moment on the left-hand flank, I definitely want two units. The Banshees, again, are not completely fixed, but they're largely fixed. I see so many uses for them tactically. You know, I think they bring a fear factor, and I don't think there's very much that does bring a fear factor in the Nighthorn army. That's that's the issue with it. I think it's got a number of very useful abilities for winning games uh, in terms of capturing objectives, and I think it's you know uh, you know obviously possible to to get some fairly uh, frustrating magic, but I don't see I I, I don't see people look at the Nighthorn army. And think it maybe have got black coach, but other than that, looking at it and thinking, oh my god, I don't want any of my units in combat with that unit. I don't think it has any units like that. Might have the odd character like that, which is why the emphasis is now on characters. Um, but the shape of it, I'm quite happy with. It's really just a case of what are the specifics. I I, I like the idea of, in general, of course, you need to be able to adapt when you get in there. But in general, having one part of the army that's there to capture and hold so you don't want too many points tied up in that because it's a waste of them um one block that's there to be just quick and another block that's there to effectively deep strike so that's where we're thinking at the moment and as i say it's a case of basically having more models than i originally intended to get to 2000 points but get 2000 points there's a number of things as well as the black coach i've now got at the moment the banshees i've got lady alinda there were a few other things i sent off for as well but they hadn't arrived that was a bit annoying really uh, because i said that that was something i sent off a week ago the things that arrived well they i got hold of them today um were the things i only ordered a couple of days ago they came pretty much straight away the stuff i ordered last week I was on the phone to them going, why haven't that arrived? And, and it was the thing I most wanted as well, because it also contains a couple of battle terms. Remember what I said, I wanted to read some battle terms uh, to get an idea of what other armies have. That will help inform um, my design as well. And it was like, well, I just sent it off. <laughs> so annoying. But I've also sent off for some more stuff from, from Games Workshop directly as well, which will hopefully arrive on Saturday. I know we have a bit of an issue with getting them to deliver things on Saturday, but we'll see. Uh, I have hopes. So there we are at the moment for I ramble on too much. Uh, hopefully there'll be a bit of an update next week with some more painted models because I want to get a load of stuff assembled this weekend and undercoated and then be painting stuff for next week. So hopefully by the next this time next week I'll have another unit or two painted and uh, and maybe some more thoughts on shape. But I think at this point it's largely just going to be get a load of things painted, get down to a club, get some games played get more things painted, introduce those things and just keep working from there. 
So thanks very much for watching this far. If you've enjoyed it, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share for further content. Until next time, I'll see you later.